this is Vivica Williams and you're watching Head to Head. Moldova is bracing for a series of important elections this year, which may prove decisive in reconfiguring the political scene and determining the country's fate for years to come. The cycle starts with parliamentary elections on February 24th, where pro-European parties will face parties pushing for closer ties with Moscow. To talk more about this, we're joined in the studio today by Sergei Garisimchuk, member of the board at Foreign Policy. Policy Council Ukrainian Prism. Sergei, thank you for being with us today. Thanks for inviting. So last time uh, Moldova had really large elections was about five years ago. And can you tell us right now where the uh, parliament and the country sits in its stance towards Europe and, and Russia? Uh, According to the recent uh, opinion polls, uh, it seems that the country is 50-50 divided. Mm -hmm. Half of the population is supporting the pro-European choice of the Republic of Moldova, whereas another half of the population is rather pro-Russian, pro pro-Moscow. So uh, the parliament more or less uh, reflects uh, the public opinion because there is openly pro-Russian political party, which is called Socialist Party, and which is headed, uh, formal, in, informally headed by the current president of the Republic of Moldova, Mr. Dodon. And there is also Democratic Party of the Republic of Moldova. Uh, however, its reputation is uh, not not so perfect because it is headed by the well-known Moldovan oligarch Vlad mm -hmm. Plahotniuk, whose rhetoric is pro-European. However, uh, there are a lot of complaints from Brussels that the human rights, democracy, uh, suffer under his rule in, in the Republic of Moldova. There is also a third group which is out of parliament at the moment, but which will uh, compete with the ruling party and socialists at the upcoming elections. It's uh, the coalition of two parties called ACUM. And uh, this political force uh, seems to be really pro-European. However, they are very limited in resources, bo both uh, financial and political resources to, to get the victory. So probably all of three, all these three extras will be present in the new parliament. However, it's difficult to predict what would be the configuration of right. the coalition. What, what percentage each is going to have. And what is it make, made up now? It's about uh, parliament-wise. Does it reflect uh, the population with a 50-50 balance? Or do we see more from the president's party and more of this pro-Russia leaning so far? Well, at the moment, the, the majority in the parliament holds a Democratic Party, and they sort of balance pro-Russian views of the president. Uh, but uh, there are also, like, gossips among the expert society that, in, the, in fact, they are working together, just blaming each other for a lack of success in European integration or integration with Russia. So they are just playing a game and sh sh showing to, to the others that they simply cannot do the reforms because the government says president blocks it and the president says government blocks it so mm -hmm. so some, somewhat of a kind of a charade of keeping this status quo yeah is what seems yeah to because it's very beneficial for both president Dodona and for mr plahotniuk and what are you seeing for the future for example on january 30th uh the president Dodon visited his counterpart in Moscow. So, and, and that's with time, you know, we have this quote where uh, Putin says, we in Russia obviously are not indifferent to how the Moldovan parliament will be formed. So um, what are you seeing uh, with Russia's influence and pressure, I mean, this coming from uh, onto the president, current president? Of course, Russia is interested uh, in any scenario because uh, just recently we released a paper about the possible scenarios after the election and informally we call them bad, very bad, awful and disastrous. So, so nothing <laughs> looking so... Uh, so so it means that in any case we are far from political stability in the Republic of Moldova. In the best case scenario for Russian Federation, socialists will get the majority and will form shape the government themselves. And it will lead us to the situation when all of the promises that President Dodon made during his presidency, they will turn true because he will get the capacity to, to implement them. So, for, for example, what were some of the promises that he made? Uh, f well, he promised that he will, uh, he will uh, probably freeze the relations with the EU. Uh, he will probably reconsider the association agreement with, with the EU. He will probably join the Eurasian Economic Union in the capacity of observer at least. Uh, and, of course, he is also using the card of Transnistrian conflict, promising that uh, 
when Moldova will be neutral and pro-Russian, there will be no division lines with Transnistrians and they will probably join, reintegrate into the Republic of Moldova. Because by now the secessionist region is uh, stressing that they cannot join Moldova in any case because they do not want to be Europa Euro Europeanized, mm -hmm. so to say. Mm -hmm. So what are the other um, uh, scenarios when it comes to Transnistria? Uh, uh, th there are a few more scenarios. Uh, first, uh, in the recent interview, uh, Mr. Krasnoselsky, self-proclaimed president of self-proclaimed Transnistria, uh, said that by no means uh, Transnistria can join Moldova. However, uh, Russian Federation may push, may push uh, the so-called Transnistrian government uh, mm -hmm. to reintegrate with the Republic of Moldova just to keep it under control, because such mm -hmm. reintegration will be only with the right of veto on foreign policy steps, which means that Moldova will be basically stuck and uh, linked to Moscow, not to the EU. And do you foresee that, regardless of the uh, results of the elections, that there'll be some change in uh, Transnistria and how it's it's considered and, and what its uh, relationship is with? Uh, well, in, in this regard, uh, I have a feeling that there are only two possible scenarios. The one which I've already mentioned, reintegration, but on Moscow rules. Mm -hmm. And the second one, status quo. I do not, I do not foresee any escalation in, in, in the in Transnistrian region because uh, there, there are basically no preconditions for it. Of course, there is a strong Russian military presence and of course we have some paramilitary groups and not to mention so-called Transnistrian army. Uh, however, the fact that Ukraine blocked any transit of goods to, to the Republic of Moldova as well as transit of uh, soldiers and officers to the Republic of Moldova prevents uh, uh, high-level escalation. Mm -hmm. Do you see, for example, the Prime Minister of Moldova, uh, Pavel Filip, has been calling for uh, the removal, for Russia to remove its troops. Do you see this as an actual uh, true voicing or as something you were saying before that this could be just rhetoric or or something that could possibly happen following? Oh, well, of course, uh, the Republic of Moldova, the government of the Republic of Moldova is often repeating this claim to, to withdraw Russian troops from the Republic of Moldova territory. However, it's interesting to take a look at the, at the resolution of the United Nations, uh, which was uh, passed last year, uh, and uh, according to this resolution, the United Nations asks Russia to withdraw troops. Mm -hmm. However, uh, there are no deadlines, right. which means that uh, Russia can stay there as long as it right. wishes. It's just a, it's a request with, yeah. with no, nothing behind it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what are you seeing for, um, when we, let's talk a bit about Russian influence and, and um, meddling in elections, which is something that happens. Uh, what are you seeing for, the prog you know, for this February elections, and what steps are Moldova undertaking, if any, to try to prevent outside influence? Well, formally speaking, Russia is supporting all, all the political parties w which uh, declare pro-Russian uh, sentiments. Mm -hmm. So the main uh, party in this regard is Socialist Party, and uh, of course, uh, President Dodon is utilizing his visits to, to, to Putin uh, almost every month, uh, and also they have a support of Patriarch Kirill, who, who expressed his support towards President Dodon. And uh, Moldova tried to prevent Russian influence by prohibiting uh, broadcasting of Russian TV channels. However, however, some of the Moldovan TV channels uh, do broadcast Russian uh, movies, mm -hmm. Russian TV shows, just under the umbrella of Moldovan brand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then uh, there's no way to really prevent the influence, as we know it's very hard to to, to yeah. prevent propaganda and Russian influence. So what are you seeing then, uh, what are some of the other scenarios that you see uh, post-election? Uh, except for the majority of Socialist Party, we can also take into account the possibility of coalition, formal coalition between Plachotniuk and Dodon, which will lead us to status quo, mm -hmm. because informal coalition is already in place. And uh, also we cannot exclude the possibility of the scenario when uh, socialists and pro-European political parties will, will unite in their fight against Plachotniuk, because Plachotniuk has a very high anti-rating, 
very low popularity among the uh, electorate and therefore uh, the situation is like that that they can just unite against somebody not for right. some idea but against somebody and the fourth uh, scenario if there is no coalition then moldova will uh, will start a cycle of snap elections mm -hmm. because if there is no coalition for three months it's the condition precondition for, for new elections and so what do you see uh, when we look at for Ukraine uh, based on these elections? Uh, any changes in uh, the relationship or will this put maybe Ukraine at more risk of encirclement on one part by Russian uh, troops? Well, if talking about the, 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 the best case scenario for Ukraine, then of course it would have been uh, a coup victory, but mm -hmm. it's not very likely. Uh, however, to some extent we managed to work with the democratic government and the, the level of relations with the democratic government is more or less uh, good. And therefore, even if there is a coalition of Democrats and socialists, I guess that the Ukrainian foreign ministry, Ministry of Foreign Affairs will, will still manage to, to keep uh, an eye on, on the developments and to prevent some negative scenarios. But uh, the scenario of a socialist victory definitely would be disastrous and, and I, I, I wouldn't even exclude downgrading the level of dem diplomatic relations between two countries. Well, thank you so much for being in to talk with us about this. And hopefully we'll be able to have you back on uh, to discuss the outcomes of the elections sure. once you. they've happened. Thank you so thank much. You. And that was Sergei Gerasimchuk, a member of the board at Foreign Policy Council called Ukrainian Prism. Thank you for watching and stay tuned with UATV for more.